Good morning, my love. We all know how important radiographs are in our uh, dental practice. Therefore, it is imperative for us to achieve the maximum out of minimum exposure. Now, how do we do that? I'm here to tell you about the various principles behind producing an image with required uh, characteristics which can uh, effectively give out the maximum interpretation results with minimum of exposure. So in today's class, we'll be talking about the image properties and the projection geometry behind producing an uh, exact replica of the area of interest so that we can uh, infer any kind of abnormalities from the normal uh, structures. So what is an ideal radiograph? Which is, what, uh, what, is the, what are the requirements for an ideal radiograph? Now, ideal radiograph as described by H.M. Worth is one which shows a desired density, that is a required density, the overall blackness that shows a part without any uh, uh, distortion and which shows completely the area of interest along with the surrounding structures. So the main uh, idea behind producing an ideal radiograph is to produce a required density, contrast and the various physical characteristics along with the geometric characters such as requiring us to see the exact uh, the whole of the uh, area of interest along with the surrounding structures because of its uh, of its effect of any pathological entity on the surrounding areas so in this we'll be talking about the various physical structures which are required that is which start with the uh, density the contrast the speed the film latitude noise and blurring now what is density now density is defined as a degree of blackening blackening me, uh, means the areas uh, which are radiolucent now degree of blackening determines the density of the radiograph now, what are the factors uh, behind uh, producing an exact density or a required optimal density? Now, the optical density is defined as log 10 of IO by IT, that is a light incident upon the radiograph by the light transmitted by the radiograph. That means to say there are various factors which result in the uh, stoppage of the radiation. So the degree, um, uh, de the degree to which the light which is incident upon the radiograph and how much the radiograph is able to transmit it out, that determines the degree of blackening in the radiograph, which is nothing but the density of the radiograph. So it is nothing but measurement of the opacity of the film, now which is determined by the characteristic curve. Now characteristic curve is based upon the ratio, that is a log ratio of uh, light incident by the light uh, transmitted. Now this is the optimal uh, characteristic curve which is required for any kind of radiograph, be it E-speed or F-speed or any kind of speed. Now this is a, a characteristic curve which is required to produce an optimal density. Now the radiograph density is determined by two factors. One is the exposure, that is the amount of radiation the, uh, the particular image receptor is projected or subjected to. Now, the thickness and the density of the subject that is nothing but uh, subject density so exposure how is it uh, important now greater the exposure greater the greater is the ratio of the light uh, transmitted to the right uh, light which is incident that means to say the uh, greater amount of exposure there is a greater chance there is greater a percentage of photons which are being uh, uh, interacted with the matter which are interacting with the image receptor and greater is the amount of uh, uh, radiation which is uh, exiting away from the uh, image receptor. So it is directly proportional the amount of exposure which is uh, this image receptor is subjected to uh, uh, directly is proportional to the density of the radiograph. Now if you see the characteristic curve if there is increased exposure there is increase or the movement of the characteristic curve to the right of the x axis that is it moves away from the optimal density so there is more uh, darkening of the film which in some cases is not useful for the uh, dental physician as it obscures any minimal or low contrast uh, pathological entities so an optimum exposure is obviously needed to uh, produce an optimum density now the subject thickness obviously with the increase in the subject matter that is the area of interest matter there is greater amount of interaction between the number of photons and the matter uh, be, uh, between the uh, x-ray source and the image receptor so there is greater attenuation of the x-ray beam hence there is lesser density of the image so an optimum attenuation so if we have to say that the person a greater mass or a greater mass of uh, area of interest is when it is subjected to x-ray radiation we have to optimally increase or directly uh, proportional or uh, 
quantitatively increase the amount of exposure so that we get a normal or a, a optimal density of the image. Now, how do we test the density testing? We uh, normally do it by stepwise test, which, wherein a series of progressive lead uh, foils are attached to each other, as you can see over here. So, progressively, the amount of lead or amount of attenuation is increased and then it is exposed onto a radiograph, which produces uh, various uh, degrees of uh, uh, darkening. That means that uh, shows us the amount of density or the required amount of density which is needed to produce an optimal uh, image. The next uh, physical characteristic is the radiographic contrast. It is nothing but the range of densities of the radiograph. Now, as I said, a density is nothing but degree of uh, darkening or the uh, overall darkness of the image. Now, how this uh, darkness is uh, presented upon a scale, that is how many degrees of darkening, so the range of uh, densities can, are available to us. This is important uh, so as to we can uh, differentiate between a low contrast uh, pathological entities with a uh, high contrast pathological entities. Now, how is it important? Now, if you see over here in the left uh, uh, image, there is a low contrast or a low gray scale. That means to say the difference between the darkness of the adjacent areas is much less. That means to say there are greater number of gray shades within the uh, radius. So, any uh, be the uh, greater amount, uh, the greater amount of uh, gray scales, we are able to uh, differentiate various, various or varying number of uh, uh, pathological entities within uh, which can suit one particular gray scale or uh, which can come under one group of uh, degree of darkening as in this case. Now, what happens with the high contrast? Now, the high contrast, the areas between the maximal darkness and the minimal darkness is very high. That means to say the jump from the low, uh, low uh, degree of darkening to the high degree of darkening is so much that the area between them or the jump between them, any pathological entities which have a degree of darkness within this particular range are totally missed out, which we don't want. So we have to uh, uh, attain maximal information for minimal uh, exposure. So we have to f uh, find a strike a balance between the low contrast and the high contrast or the long gray or the short gray scales. So what are the factors affecting contrast? One, the subject density. Obviously, with the increase in the subject density, the contrast also increases. The subject thickness, again, directly proportional. The uh, thickness increases. There is very the uh, jump from the uh, degrees of uh, darkening also increases. The beam energy or the KVP, this is inversely proportional. The higher the KVP, the more number of photons, there is decrease in the contrast. That is to say, we uh, we are obscuring or uh, the, uh, the, the gaps between the low uh, degree of darkening and the high degree of darkening. That is filled up with the increase in the number of photons, that is, which is directly proportional to the increase in the KVP. And hence, and also the processing, the if we develop the particular radiograph more, there is uh, the obscurement of the uh, various uh, gray scales and there is darkening of the image. Under processing also, on the other hand, will produce a lesser uh, a contrast radiograph, which also we don't want. Now, these are the, all the defects in uh, the various processing of the subject density, how the low contrast and the high contrast uh, images are produced. We can see how a low con contrast image which you can see over here, uh, totally obscures the image uh, quality, uh, uh, obscures all the pathological entities. Whereas on the other hand also, high contrast, we are able to just make out the opacity and the uh, uh, lucent areas, but nothing in between them. The next physical characteristic is the radiographic speed. Now the speed is nothing but the radiation which is required. For, the, uh, for an image of a standard density to be produced. So the speed at which a conversion of these uh, uh, halide crystals within the uh, image receptor is able to absorb the number of uh, the photons and able to convert it into a latent image. Also, this latent image should be, uh, able, to, uh, should be able to translate into an image with a required density. Now, this is called the speed of the film. Now, what is the, the speed of film dependent upon? It is dependent upon the size of the silver halide crystal as well as the processing temperature. Now, obviously, with the increase in the size, the surface area of the uh, silver halide crystal increases within the image receptor. 
Hence, more number of photons per second at a particular point of time are incident upon the surface area of the silver halide crystals. Hence, greater is the conversion rate from the number of photons into a latent image. But also, there is also a down point with increase in the silver halide crystals. The blurring or the image sharpness also decreases. So, we cannot uh, uh, totally increase the silver halide crystals as a one piece in an image receptor because we uh, we uh, suffer with a blurring of the image and we cannot make it too small the uh, silver halide crystals uh, uh, increasing thereby increasing the speed uh, uh, exposure of the patient uh, sacrificing the speed of the for the sake of speed of an uh, image receptor so we again have to strike an optimal balance a um, uh, uh, size of the crystal which can also uh, put the blurring or reduce the blurring to the minimum and also sufficiently increase the speed thereby reducing the exposure of the particular patient. Also the processing temperature, uh, it's an understood fact, uh, the time temperature method which is followed in the processing method which we talked about earlier, increase in the temperature increases, uh, increases the rate at which a particular radiograph can be developed. Uh, so uh, this is directly proportional. Now we can see the characteristic curve, the optical uh, density with the log relative exposure, how and uh, the different speeds or the radiographic speeds affects the characteristic uh, curve. We have the ecta speed or the E speed and we also have the ultra speed that is the D speed. We can see how the D speed via the characteristic curve moves away from the optimal uh, uh, curve which we do not want and we can see how the E speed is much nearer to the normal or the required characteristic curve. We have next uh, something called as film latitude. Now the latitude is nothing but the range of exposures. We then move on to something called as film latitude. Now the film latitude is nothing but the range of exposures that can be recorded as distinguishable densities. That means to say even, th even though uh, our, our uh, exposure me uh, methods or the projection geometry is all good and we are able to or we uh, could uh, translate it into various uh, densities upon the film so that to attain a maximal uh, information uh, interpretation from the image the radiographic image receptor it uh, inherently needs to uh, absorb this information and then display it in the latent image as a distinguishable density now that is inherent to the image receptor now that is uh, measured as a film latitude now, wide latitude, the characteristic curve becomes long or a, and a, and a, uh, or a straight line or a shallow slope. Now, with the increase in the latitude, there is decrease in the contrast. Now, we can again see a film A and film B. How with the uh, log relative exposure and the optical uh, density? With the uh, increase in the latitude, the characteristic, characteristic curve moves away from the optimal area. Decrease in the latitude moves it towards the left of the X-ray uh, beam, left of the X-ray axis. Now uh, we have to strike a balance again between the latitude and the contrast so that we maintain the uh, characteristic curve again in the optimal range. Now how that is possible by uh, altering the KVP of the image. That means to say increase in the KVP decreases the contrast and then increases the latitude. Now we have to strike a balance between all of these and hence uh, we uh, stick on to a particular uh, KVP. Normally for IOPS we follow a KVP of 70 to 75 KVP which requires, which uh, uh, gives out maximal contrast with uh, maximal latitude. Whereas on the other hand with extra all radiography we increase this KVP because of the usage of extra uh, grids or intensifying screens. We increase the KVP up to 100 uh, or 95 uh, KVP which then gives a optimal latitude and contrast. Now we have something called as radiographic noise. Now this noise is nothing but uh, a recording of uneven densities that which is not uh, needed for a radiographic interpretation. Now how is uh, that produced? There are two ways, either radiographic artifact or radiographic model. So what is this radiographic model? Now this is nothing but which is inherent to the uh, image receptor depends upon the physical structure of the film or the intensifying screen as in cases of extra, extra oral radiography which is seen as graininess in intraoral films. Now this is uh, uh, inherently uh, because of the image receptor again because of two uh, uh, issues. One 
most commonly found in interval radiography is that is a quantum model that is because of the varying number of photons now how this is produced because of vary, varying kvp now there is a no standard kvp which is a uh, uh, which is used and uh, to, during the entire process of uh, exposing a radiograph now then the uh, number of photons vary at each per, per unit of time at per particular instant the number of photons is not standard now then that causes a quantum model which is uh, again inherent to the image receptor now on the other hand in extra radiography we have something called a screen structure model that is basically because of the graininess which is seen because of the intensifying screens that which has the screen phosphors which have a basic uh, uh, ability or the inherent property to produce uh, blurring or graininess of the image now that is reduced by uh, in, uh, reducing the number of uh, phosphor crystals or reducing the size of the phosphor crystals hence reducing the graininess or hence the model of the uh, or radiographic noise in extra radiography now on the other hand there is another kind of a radiographic noise which can be avoided by uh, producing a uh, uh, by following few protocols that is the radiographic artifact most commonly we can see in panoramic radiographs wherein uh, if the patient is not uh, asked to remove any metal uh, objects uh, neck above now these are uh, produced as uh, radiographic artifacts which mimic a particular uh, any uh, kind of a uh, uh, disease and entity by producing a radiographic uh, radio opacity within the film uh, image receptor which we do not want now in this case also this is a radiographic uh, artifact again uh, produced because of any uh, kind of processing error or any kind of uh, uh, extra uh, metallic objects which can be seen over here as three dots over here which mimic any uh, some kind of uh, uh, dental ob abnormality since it is related to the teeth but which is not uh, actually present in the uh, patient now this radiographic blurring which is uh, uh, the last physical characteristic now there uh, there are two uh, points which have to be remembered one is the sharpness and the resolution now the sharpness is nothing but the ability to uh, completely delineate the borders of the area of interest that means to say the how uh, effectively uh, the dental physician can make out the border or the uh, borders of any particular pathological entity or the normal structures now that is called the sharpness of the image now there is another something called as resolution now the resolution is nothing but the ability of the uh, radiograph to distinguish two uh, entities which are closely placed together that means to say uh, two uh, pathological entities or normal entities which are very close together now if the resolution is very high we are able to make out the minor uh, distance or the minor separation between the two separate uh, entities but if the resolution is low we see the, both the entities as a single entity and a large entity which again uh, gives a false image uh, false interpretation for the dental physician so what are the causes of this uh, uh, blurring now one is called the image receptor blurring the other one is a motion blurring and geometric blurring now what is image uh, receptor blurring this is uh, totally influenced uh, by the grain size as i told uh, as i told you earlier now increasing the size of the uh, silver halide crystals obviously increases the speed at which it can convert the number of photons into a latent image but on the downside it also increases the blurring of the image uh, which is directly proportional to the size of the silver halide crystals so uh, that is what is the receptor blurring uh, so we have to strike an optimal balance between the grain size and the speed of the film now there is a motion blurring as the name suggests it is because of the movement of the x-ray source or the movement of the subject or movement of the image receptor or movement of all three at the same time which do not produce uh, exact uh, sharp image with, uh, because of the movement there is blurring again which we can see over here how the motion blurring produces a, a kind of blurring image in these uh, IOPS now then we have the geometric blurring now the geometric blurring on the other hand is a uh, much more technique sensitive that means to say the principles of geometry which have to be followed while taking a particular radiograph that has to be followed over here else we uh, uh, get a geometric kind of blurring 
Now, what is that? Now, that is influenced by the focus spot size. That is the uh, area or the X-ray source itself. Now, then followed by the focus spot, the focus spot to the object distance. Then, uh, at last, we have the object to the film distance. So, the motion blurring, uh, as I was saying, uh, which is followed by the, something called a geometric blurring, which can be avoided by uh, following few principles of a projection geometry. It is totally avoidable. It is directly uh, uh, the, uh, the dental uh, physician or the person dental technician is directly uh, responsible to avoid this kind of uh, projection uh, geometry related uh, blurring. Now that is dependent upon the image sharpness and resolution. We have the image size distortion and the image shape distortion, all of which uh, can cause blurring of the image, which can be avoided by uh, following few principles. Now, what are those uh, uh, principles? Now, the image sharpness and resolution. This is totally dependent upon the effective focus spot. Then uh, that has to be as small as uh, possible. Now, why it has to be small? I'll be showing in the diagrams. Increase in the distance between the focal spot and the object and the minimal distance between object and film. Now, how is it possible? If you see this particular area, uh, this particular radiograph uh, image, we see how the focal spot over here, this is the natural uh, kind of uh, image or the natural process by which this uh, uh, radiograph is produced. From the focal spot, we have the X-ray uh, rays. We take two particular rays uh, which uh, pass through the tips of the image or the tips of the area of interest and how they produce the image upon the image receptor. Now we can see how these particular rays from the focal spot, from the uh, one end and the other end, two separate rays interact at the tip and then they uh, diverge again uh, up onto the image receptor to produce a small area wherein there is unsharpness. That means to say this particular area is incident upon, is uh, acted upon two uh, different rays from the same focal spot and hence producing two divergent rays which result in an area of unsharpness as you can see over here and uh, same is the case with the other end as you can see over here which is then produced upon the image receptor now in this case if we see now decreasing this focus spot reduces the uh, divergence between these two rays which interact at the uh, tip of the area of interest we can see over here reducing this particular focus spot will reduce this uh, area or the light uh, gray area which you can see reducing the area and hence producing minimal uh, blurring or minimal uh, geometric blurring upon the image receptor. So that was the first principle wherein we said this uh, the effective focus spot has to be as small as possible. Now the second point which you can see increasing the distance between the focal spot and the object. The focal spot and the object. Now, if we increase the uh, uh, size, we attain a degree of parallelism between the two divergent rays which are produced from the two edges of the focus spot. Now, if we increase this particular area, the uh, focus spot and the object area, this divergent rays over, a, uh, over of a length of a time, over the length of uh, uh, the distance, will produce a parallel rays at this particular point that is the tip of the area of interest. Hence, the divergent, resultant divergent, which will uh, produce the image upon or project the image upon the image receptor will be, will be much more parallel, thereby reducing the geometric blurring. Now, the third point, as you can see, the minimal distance between the object and film. Minimal distance between the object and the film, you can see, obviously, we can see the resultant divergent from the rays which are produced from the two ends of the focal spot. This divergence, area of divergence, we are not allowing those uh, particular rays to diverge to a maximal extent because we are decreasing this particular distance. As you can see, if we place this image receptor over here, we can see how the area between the divergence is much more less at this particular point, midway between the object and the image receptor. When compared, to the image receptor placed at the farther region, we can see how the width increases. 
So these are the principles upon which a particular strong uh, image or an image with uh, good sharpness and resolution can be formed. The same is the scene over here. The uh, actual focal spot and the effective focal spot, we can see how the focal spot when it reduces in size will produce much sharper images. As you can see, the two ends, the area which is covered, the dark uh, black area and the light gray areas when compared uh, to both the uh, images, the area with the image with bigger focal spot will produce bigger areas of unsharpness when compared to area of smaller focal spot or effective focal spot will produce smaller areas of unsharpness. And then we can also see how we are increasing uh, the distance uh, by increasing the distance between the object and the film we are getting greater amount of unsharpness which we can see again over here by a greater width of the light grayish area. Now by decreasing the object and the film distance over here on the left hand side, we can see how we are decreasing the areas of unsharpness. Now we can see this column over here and this column over here. This is much wider that means to say it is much more unsharp when compared to this image on the left hand side which has lesser amount of lesser width of the column they were indicating lesser unsharpness. Same again with the case of the second principle, increasing the distance between the focal spot and the object will again produce sharper images. As you can see on my right hand side, this particular length object and uh, uh, focal spot length is much more greater than this particular length. And we can see how this columns over here, this column is much more wider when compared to this column which is much more thinner that means to say here the unsharpness is much more when compared to the unsharpness on the right hand side. Now there is something called as image size distortion now that again uh, depends upon increasing the distance between the focus spot and the film again and also the minimal distance between the object and the film. The same principles again hold good over here. Now there is something called as image shape distortion. Now the image shape distortion is uh, slightly uh, dependent on various uh, two other kind of uh, projection principles. One, the film parallelity between uh, between the object's long axis and the central ray perpendicular to both object and film, which is uh, which can be clearly understood by seeing this particular images. We can see how over here on the left hand side, the object is not parallel to the image receptor nor it is parallel to the uh, object source and nor it is perpendicular to the x-ray beam. So that produces an image uh, uh, image size over here. We can see how, how it is over here, actual image size and this our shape and this we can see over here how it is enlarged. So the shape is uh, being distorted when the object is not parallel to the image receptor. Now we can see on the other hand, how this when the x-ray beams are not perpendicular to the uh, object or the image receptor. Again, we can see how an image of 10 units long becomes so large uh, around about 25. So uh, exactly double the size of the original uh, entity. So in both the cases, be it uh, if it is not pa uh, parallel uh, to the image receptor, the object and the image receptor or if the x-ray uh, source or the beams is not perpendicular to either the image receptor or the uh, object, we get a distortion of the images, which uh, again is, uh, reduces the quality of the radiograph and hence reduces the amount of information which can be interpreted from that particular radiograph. So these are the principles upon which we can, uh, upon which uh, the basic radiography depends upon. Following these particular principles and following keeping these image characteristics in mind, we can always reduce the amount of exposure the patient is subjected to by producing a perfect image with minimal amount of exposure. Thank you.